All right, all right. Welcome back. Welcome back, Birdman Drug Stories. So we're going to hop in the time machine, drop a like while you drop in the Birdman Drug Stories. They only cost you free 99 we're going to dive right in, hop in the time machine like we do here on the show. We're going to go back in time. Go back in time to when I myself was a dumbass doing horrible decisions and life decisions, running his head against the wall time and time again, only to find out that the person whose fault it was 99.9% of the times was me. It is fun to reflect back on now that my decision making has gotten a lot better. Not surprisingly, when I stopped doing drugs, my decision making became a lot better overall. Now, not perfect. Dude. It's not like I became some superstar and everything I, I said was gold. But back in the day, I was a train wreck, just like maybe lots of you are coming out of, or maybe are even still in. Uh, so we're going to go on a time issue. We're going to go back to a wild one, old school Birdman drug story, classic type episode coming up, coming at you. Right now. All right, so here it was. It was a while ago. Though. The, the story here, um, you know, I I had told the story about when I got in a you know, grow house of me and a partner of mine, two partners of mine had gotten raided. It was me, my roommate at the time, and then um, another partner who didn't live there. And me and my roommate that were staying in the grow house, you know, ended up. Make a long story short, uh, the fucking cops went there and fucking kicked in the door in the middle of the night. Luckily, I wasn't there when they raided the place. I was uh, staying uh, at my girl at the time's uh, house. Like, I was out for the night. And good thing I wasn't there because that was a big reason why I got off of that case. And there was gun charges. They found all kinds of shit up there. Guns, uh, marijuana cultivation, a whole grow house full of fucking... It was a three-bedroom apartment. It was my room, my roommate's room, and then the weed room. So, uh... The weed room was just a whole big size bedroom just filled to the brim with plants. And we, we nursed them when they were little babies and they're like our they're like our kids back then. We like nursed them up to health to be like big and strong fucking weed plants. Uh, and right before they got done, we we're about to take them down and dry them out. And before we got to the process of taking them down and drying them out, which is the last step in the process and clipping them, um, you know, that's all when the, the cops got kicked in the door and raided the place. And we got we got smoked. Uh, my boy ended up doing some, some time for it. And he actually went and uh, took the whole rap. He went up there and said that I had moved out and I had nothing to do with it. Which, of course, is 100% true. But, uh, yeah, no, he held it down. And I'm still friends with him to this day. He's a good friend of mine. And especially after that, he held it down when many probably would not be so solid. But uh, this is that era we had just gotten raided. And it took a while for like uh trial to come up or whatnot. You know, you got pre-trial and then you got, you know, you got like a million pre-trials. They keep making you come back into court for dis uh, things they call discovery, which is essentially like getting the facts of the court case for like you and your lawyer to know your lawyer would be like, I have to find the discovery in the case. I'm like, what the fuck? I was like, what are you trying to discover? I was like, I'm innocent. <coughs> He's like, no. Nah. And then he explained to me what discovery was, getting essentially the facts of the case in line so you can present uh, a defense. But with my roommate taking the rap for it and saying I had moved out prior and had no knowledge of it, my lawyer's job was, was pretty easy. It didn't stop him from taking thousands of dollars for a payment. It was just like an easy, you know, few thousand dollars that he had, he had gotten. So, um, yeah, he was a cool lawyer. He was like this uh, Jewish lawyer, older guy. He had a ponytail. He had an earring. Uh, you know, word on the street back then was that he was into partying. I guess he's like party with strippers and do coke with strippers in downtown Springfield all the time. He was like a, a well-known uh, lawyer, party animal, and he was a cool dude. He defended me well, and he was a really nice guy. He was very respectful, and he got the job done uh, with my case, which is what was most important to me at the time. But, now, of course, you know that I'd gotten away. Uh, you know, the uh, state had dropped the case. So, you know, I had gotten away with it in terms of, like, the state dropped the case. My roommate, he fucking got popped. He, he did a little bit of time for it and since gotten out and rebuilt his life. Now he's a family man, has kids, a wife, so he's doing good as well. Uh He's still my friend. I still talk to him and shit. And that really, that really showed me who he was. Like, you know, everybody says they'd hold it down if something was to go downhill, but few actually do and hold to their words. Uh, he's a real one right there. So shout out to my boy who held it down. But the day of trial, I remember I was at a different, a different apartment. Now I moved in with another roommate of mine. I think I had just gotten in some altercation at like my parents' house with my brother-in-law where, you know, 
make a long story short, I, you know, beat him up and left in cuffs. And then I got kicked out of my mom's house at that time, like any good junkie would do. When I got kicked out, I basically went to another friend's mind, like, I got kicked out for beating up my, my brother-in-law. And uh, my boy, he didn't want, he didn't really want to help me out, but I guess he had a soft spot for me. And, and he's like, all right, Bird, you know, is already working. I'm like, yeah, I just got a job at the mall uh, selling cell phones. I was like, the dudes in the middle of the mall with them little cell phone stands that when you walk by, you're like, don't make eye contact. Yeah, I was one of them guys. I'm, I'm like, I see you trying to avoid me. I was like, here's an upgrade. Verizon, Verizon, T-Mobile, singular back then. <laughs> oh, singular was still a thing back then. That was my first ever cell phone back in the day, like my junior year of high school was a singular cell phone. They didn't have a camera, no picture phone. It was an old school, big ass, like Zach Morris looking phone. Um, but uh, so I moved in with my, my roommate. Uh, my my old roommate had, I think he, uh, after we got raided, I think he might move back like with maybe his mom or his dad. He moved somewhere. He couldn't stay in the uh, raided grow house. So uh, he went to jail for a little bit. He came out and then he re started rebuilding his life. But my the trial date, once they told me I was good, I remember being, you know, all paranoid. And like I said, the it took months for the, the court to like run its course. He had, I had to go back so many times another court date, another court date. And I keep like taking days off of work or like having to come in late uh, to the job at the car dealerships I was working at back then. Cause I kept having to go and show up for court dates. And as each court day progressed, I started getting higher and higher anxiety and more and more nervous about what the outcome was going to be because it was in a school zone. They found guns and ammunition in my room, in my closet and the full, uh, the full marijuana grow operation. And like I said, it was all in a school zone too. So it was like a, a triple smoking though it was looking bad my only saving grace was that um i wasn't there when they raided and i wasn't on like there was no official lease right it was just kind of i paid some guy who paid the landlord and i didn't you know i dealt with my roommate i didn't have to deal with the landlord i never signed the lease i would just pay him and i moved in or whatnot so i had no paper trail back to me the only reason i got implicated was when they were raided i had like a picture of me and my ex like on a nightstand there like a fucking dumbass and they're like hey who's that guy Looks like that might be his bedroom over there where we found the guns. <laughs> and they fucking, uh, they went over there and they found the picture and they just put a warrant out for me. I got picked up. I dodged them for maybe a week and I finally got picked up at the gas station. I got arrested right in front of like my old friend's uh, mom was at the gas station. She's like, hey, Birdman. I'm like, hey, friend's mom. <laughs> and then cop comes out of nowhere undercover. He's like, Andrew, I can see him, scumbag. We've been looking for you. I'm like, for what? They're like, guns and drug charges. They fucking arrest me in front of my old friend's mom. So that was like an embarrassing moment for me. But I had more problems on my hand than being embarrassed about uh, my friend's mom. So when I got picked up there. Like I said, it took forever for the actual court to like play itself out to decide, hey, we're going to bring this to trial. I'm like, fuck, we're bringing it to trial. My lawyer's like, we're good. We're bringing it to trial, bird. I was like, all right, man. And I uh, hope this money pays off that we paid you. And disclaimer, I was a junkie at the time. And, uh, you know, I wasn't a heroin junkie, but I was already starting to do uh, Oxy. So I was an Oxy junkie, Oxycontin, Oxycodone. So I was getting into that shit. I'd already been going strong for a little bit then when we had gotten raided. And when I got raided is what, what really got me worse into the opiates because I wanted something to really numb the pain. And, like, if you're stressed out and you do some blow, you're probably like, I'm more stressed out. I'm definitely going to jail. You get more bugged out. I wanted something like to, uh, some landing gear, to, whew, nice and calm my mind off shit i was too scared to do heroin yet i still looked at heroin like disgustingly i'm like oh heroin no i'm not realizing that the pills i was seeking were essentially the very similar thing you know if not the same very similar so after that raid that's when my pill abuse went way up uh from went from ecstasy pills over to opiate pills and that was a game-changing moment in my life which led me to be a heroin addict and a dope fiend so <coughs> And, uh, yeah, I'm totally, I'm totally fucked at that point. Like I finally got off the hook from this huge black cloud that had been following me around for years and finally got through it successfully. And just for an immediate boom, dose of reality slapped me across my bird beak. And that's what I'm talking about. You know, at the time, I'm sure that I pointed the finger at everybody else and that none of this was my fault. Now I had legitimately honestly had nothing to do with the break-in hadn't set it up didn't know who did it but it was looking it was looking back because I had such a bad track record it was looking like I was the number one suspect so I'm getting kicked out of there fucking just fresh off getting the case dropped and uh 
it was just my life decision that kind of got me to those points where now I'm about to be kicked out again. I just got kicked out of my mom's house maybe a, a month or two prior to that. So uh, my life was just spiraling downhill. I couldn't keep it together. But also, one thing I didn't know about back then that I didn't want uh, to think about was like accountability. I never wanted to be accountable for my action. I just want to party and get high with no accountability. And then like once the party's over and once all the drugs are gone, reality sets in and then you know, where's the accountability then? I'll just point the finger, say it's not my fault. You know, it's it's his it's his fault, it's her fault, it's everybody else's fault but my own. But that wasn't the reality of it. Most of this shit was my fault. You know, maybe uh, some of it was shit that wasn't my fault. But I'll tell you what, you put yourself in those bad situations and bad predicaments, uh, sooner or later you're going to get fucking bit. It's like one of those AA catchphrases they say, that if you play on the train tracks long enough, you'll get hit. If you sit, sit in a barber shop for long enough, you're eventually going to get your hair cut. Um, it was like an AA, NA catchphrase that they always hammer into you when you go to uh, to those fellowships. But um, those are true. You know, if you hang out, if you hang out at the gutter sooner or later, you're going to be in the gutter right there with them. So, uh, you know, I wish I knew then what I know now, but you don't know what you know until you know it. Like, comment, subscribe, motherfuckers. We out.